what was the grain of the idea? How did this concept come to be? Did you kind of mash up your adolescence or what? what <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, we're like obviously moving, big moving nerds have always been. That's what we wanted to do. And uh, we started to get into television as it became more and more cinematic. Yes. Shorter seasons, they started to feel like big movies. And so we're like... I remember it was like True Detective, Kerry Fuganaga doing that, and Steven Soderbergh's The Nick, and we just started going, I'm, a, I'm as excited and more excited by this stuff I'm seeing and, on television, if you even want to call it that. And so it was like, what, what would be the ultimate long movie? And it would be Spielberg directing a big, fat Stephen King book. And so John Carpenter doing this. Yeah, John Carpenter. With John Carpenter yeah. music. Yeah. Right. So that was that was that was the dream, and that was that that's that was sort of the ambition. We didn't think anyone was going to make it, so that was a nice surprise. <laughs> oh, really? Good. Yeah. Wow. Nice. And then Sean, how did you get involved? What what made you go? Oh. I well, do this. my my executive Dan Cohen, he comes to me one day and he says, "You need to stop what you're doing." I've read the script by these two twin brothers that no one's ever heard of and it might be the best thing I've ever read. And I read it, and it was. And I didn't know kind of how it was gonna work, and again, we didn't know if anyone was gonna let us make it, and we definitely didn't know if anyone was gonna watch it. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew that this combination of an 80s backdrop, genre, and character authenticity was gonna be something special, and I told the brothers, you know what, whatever you need, that's what I'm gonna do, and let's get this into the world. This was the fastest thing I ever binged. Once I saw the font on the title, you were in, right? I was like, oh no, yeah. man, that's every Stephen King novel font. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how did you, does that font have a name? You, did you specifically search that one out, or I, I don't? I do remember the when we were coming up with the title, mm -hmm. we were just testing it out in the font. We wanted something to look good. Yeah, it's like in that red, in that font. So it was, it was important to look good aesthetic. I think it got tweaked a little bit, but even from our lookbook on, it was a, a version of that. We wanted to look, yeah, like one of those Stephen King yeah. paperbacks that we devoured. I'm sorry, guys. I just know that Hall H loves font questions. Like, yeah. that's, that's the first thing they want to know about. They're all but also, I mean, it's, it's like, that's, a, that's an expression of the auteurship of the brothers, is like, right down to font. Like, they knew what they wanted from the font before yeah. we even made the show. From and the that's how specific. Up, you knew it. Yeah. It's important. And then um, the, the composer, the, the soundtrack of this right. show is fantastic. Um, have you heard about, like, is it, because I remember when, when Twin Peaks came out in the early 90s, that Angelo Badalamente's yeah. music began showing up, and, like, I would I remember going to clubs, and they would play that music. Has the Stranger Things theme made its way into any, that's a perfect end of rave song yeah. to get everyone to start going home. Because the duffers are always at raves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, I think they are. At yeah. concerts, they'll play it before the band comes out and stuff like that. I'm really happy for these guys, Con Michael, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're, you know, they're amazing. They're out of Austin. They had never composed for film or TV before. Really? They, what, what made you pick them then? Like, what was... uh, they, they had a synth band called Survive, and we were, we were into them, and, um, and we tested it over, like, footage of, you know, E.T. and all this stuff that we mashed up together. We thought it was cool. And they did some, you know, test samples. And then we said, you know, they had day jobs. You can't make a living as an electronic musician in Austin. Wait a minute. They weren't making that easy synth no. band money? No, they, they weren't. <laughs> I That's don't know. weird. Wait. They weren't. So I said, you know, will you quit your jobs, do this full time? They were like, hell yes. And uh, here we are. Yeah. I love the commitment to the 80s. You went for a synth band. Does one yeah. of them play a guitar? Because that would make it even more perfect. <laughs> there was a guitar in there somewhere. They've got, I don't know what the hell. Probably everything. 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 Yeah, one of them worked at a synth, used synth electronic store. So. There was, <laughs> sorry, a used synth, synth store. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything more Austin than a used synth store yeah. that a guy is, I mean, sorry. Unless you're selling pot out of the back, there's no... <laughs> Okay, well, let's, how about we bring on the cast from season one? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, hang on. No, I'm being told, ask more synth questions. Okay, so what was... <laughs> more fonts. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, first out, uh, the, of course, the girl next door with the tough side, Nancy Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen, Natalia Dyer. And then, oh, we of course have the 
Hawkins heartthrob. Please do not rush the stage as Steve Harrington, Joe Keery, ladies and gentlemen. Next, please welcome the best police chief in Hawkins, Indiana. Yeah. David K. Harbor. Bringing back the, yeah. Hellboy! Hellboy's, Hellboy's got a dad bod. Okay. And now, yeah, already. And now we have the mad scientist who will stop at nothing, Dr. Martin Brenner, played of course by Matthew Modine, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Matthew Modine. He was out selling ecstasy all day, now he's here. That's right. Sit down, Matthew. Yeah. How you doing, man? Wow. Could you be more mellow. You, you're gonna turn into a skateboard. Like, just try to unmellow yourself. Oh my God. There is not. There is not a kid in the world who can handle a slingshot better than this guy. Please welcome the ultimate bandana-wearing badass, Lucas Sinclair, Caleb McLaughlin, ladies and gentlemen. And next, we have the kid with the biggest heart, the dopest hat, and the most beautiful smile, Dustin Henderson, Gaten Matarazzo. And now, the only boy who has escaped the upside down, Will Byers, Noah Schnapp, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, the ringleader of the pack and everyone's favorite best friend, it's Mike Wheeler, Finn Wolfhard, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Finn Wolfhard, an actor born with the greatest porn name ever, ladies and gentlemen. Hey man, thanks. It is. <laughs> really puts a great thing on my future. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Get a good agent, please. Just you, you're allowed to say no to things, okay? Introduce the next guest, huh? Just <laughs> don't do anything called Stranger Thongs. That's all I'm saying. Wow. And lastly, oh, come on, I just want to thank you. You still got it, Oswald. <laughs> and lastly, in a world of tens, be an eleven, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome the girl who can flip fans with her mind. Millie Bobby Brown! All right, um... So, Finn... Yeah? Finn Wolfhard... <laughs> Dude! How did you... <laughs> Stop! When you nail a take, do you look at the camera and go, Wolfhard? <laughs> <laughs> One take, Wolfhard. <laughs> and then they kick me out. How did you get into the mind of Martin Willie? You really nail what it's like to be when you're a kid and you're actually a little more mature and intelligent than the other kids. And sometimes that's not an advantage. That, you know, like you kind of, how did you get into that mindset in the show? Because I, I remember moments like that growing up, like, oh, people don't want you to be this smart. So how, like, how did you nail that so well? Oh. Uh. I mean, I'm not like that in real life, which is, uh, but I don't know. I think it's, it's kind of cool because you can sort of access your intensities and um, bring out that sort of weirder vibe, but I'm not really sure. I mean, being smarter than all the rest of the kids is, I don't think Mike, the character, realizes that he's really smarter than the rest of the kids. I think he's just like oblivious to everything. Wow. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that was... It's it, um, and now Noah and I don't want I don't want to make you do any spoilers, but how has your character changed from being in the upside down, coming back? Like what? Without can, that, that's a weird question. I don't want to spoil the next season, but I mean, how did you? I'm gonna let you try to answer my horrible question <laughs> yeah. I just asked. Um, I think 
this compared to last season, Will definitely shows more bravery. Um, and then you, you'll definitely learn how the Upside Down affected Will and you'll get more into his storyline. Um, but there's not much I can say because I don't want to spoil anything. Your, your producer's glaring at you right now. I'm sorry. I, was, <laughs> I see that. Yeah, exactly. Um, Gaten, Caleb, you guys are the... You, I mean, you, you guys are playing characters that are faced with a lot of weirdness and horror and you stay very, very optimistic and upbeat, and you're about to deal with a new character that we're gonna meet in a little bit, uh, uh, played by Sadie Sink. How do you think, is that gonna change the dynamic of the a group, or like, what, what, do we, what do we have to look forward to from you guys as characters? These questions, man, the producers are just like staring at us. No, like, that's, I don't know this one say. feels safe. Does yeah, it? Yeah, a little bit. No, it, it's kind of <laughs> hard to like loop around. Yeah, and... like just talk about the story, because I mean, it's a fun story. Um, uh... Oh! You know, <laughs> we are friends. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I like this answer. Life. We meet. Right? How's it going? Is it going well? Dude, this is, is going doing well great. <laughs> yes, thank you. C Caleb, did you have to do slingshot training? Did you, did they? <laughs> oh, whoa, yeah. okay. I'm joking. Sorry. Um, you know, I realized that, like, I did it wrong. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, I held it weird in the beginning and then I had to learn how to like the actual the actual day where we where I had to like try to uh, uh, slingshot the Demogorgon I was kind of like shooting it at the camera and everyone else around there <laughs> at, so I kind of had to teach myself and like also like the duffers were helping me out they're like oh this is a eye. good idea and um, so I guess yeah yeah real training just with like more than one person. Didn't, just didn't like you hit Mark in the around. eye, though? Huh? Did you hit Mark in the eye? No. No, okay. No, I didn't. I thought you might have. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> okay, because he was there. You know, I thought I thought I remember you hitting him in the eye. Gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> now, Millie, you have... Yes, I mean... Ooh. You have minimal lines in this first season, and you have become this global phenomenon. So how do you play a character that, that speaks so little but expresses so much? Like, how did you get into that? Uh, I mean, it was difficult because obviously I had, uh, I had very few lines and I had to do everything, you know, express everything with my face, um, which is very hard. Um, but it, it's, it gets easier when you feel more comfortable with your character. Uh, the first two episodes, actually, um, I immediately fell in love with Eleven, and, and, and Eleven was me, so every day I'd come on set, and th I think the only thing that was hard was crying, because I f I'm such a, ha I feel like, I, I feel like I'm a happy person, so, in real life, so that when I'm crying, it doesn't come across, I need like a five minutes to kind of get in the zone, but other than that, I mean, it, it was... It was uh, difficult to portray such a hard character. Um, but yeah, like I said, it gets easier. Uh, it's hard to keep a straight face with, you know, teen boys because they, uh, they play pranks and they tell a lot of jokes like when I'm doing uh, an emotional scene. She's talking about David, by the way. <laughs> talking about who? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, he's, I'm professional, but. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, overall, it was, it was all right. Um, <clears throat> David K. Harbour. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Woo! What's up, Comic-Con? <laughs> yeah! Oh, my God. We're oh not, man. We're not, we're not selling timeshares, David. Pat, we're just having... <laughs> oh, I got a great one. You get a free clock radio if you just listen to my pitch. <laughs> Come on, Pat, and ask a question. Um... Well, okay, you and I have kind of become friends. Yeah, we yeah. became Twitter, we have a Twitter bromance. Yeah. And so we hang out with each other. Sometimes. Ugh. All right, Not cool. enough. <laughs> Not enough. Okay, go ahead. Cool. All right, just want to establish that. Question from Matthew. <laughs> um, no, but like, again, a lot of these questions that I, I don't, like, how, what, the, here's the question. How is Chief Hopper in season two? But I don't want you to, you guys have to give stuff away. The last we saw of you, you're leaving Egos yeah. for 11. You're now, you've accepted, you went from this very cynical, 
This is nonsense. Yes, yes. I believe. No, I, in this. I will say something uh, kind of serious. I mean, like one of the great things about season one, at least for Chief Hopper, is that he does get to go on such a classic hero's journey, mm -hmm. right? Like he starts out like such a jerk and such a loser true. and so horrible and you hate him. And then, no, it's true and don't worry, I know how to play that. And then, um, and then by around episode four, you're like, this guy is super awesome and if he dies, I'm suing Netflix. I feel the same way. I mean, no, right? Come on. Keep those emails coming, by the way. Because no one in Hawkins, Indiana is safe. But, um... But I will say, so the journey was so satisfying to see him come to life. And I often say that, like, that breath that he takes after he revives Will, where I almost killed Noah Schnapp uh, doing CPR, uh, he, sort of, he sort of wakes up, right? Yeah. And so in season two, it's like it's a year later, and you can't start where you, you can't do the same thing. He yeah. can't wake up again. So I think one of the really interesting subtle things about the arc in season two, which I can tell you, is that there is a psychology of a heroic action where someone does something heroic and then whether or not they can live up to that in their daily life or whether or not there are perils even of your own uh, being a savior complex and the, oh. the sort of intricate psychology of like what that makes you as a human being and the pitfalls of that. So you're going to see a wildly different arc in season two, but to me it's just as satisfying like where we get to in the end. And it all begins with leaving Egos for a character in the woods who he feels like might still be out there and yes. he's got some daughter issues of his own as you're well aware so mm -hmm. um, yeah so I'll just leave it at that and then a question that got texted to me uh, will there be more Sheriff Hopper shirtless scene <laughs> that was yes yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody needs to see it. that was the one hate mail we got from Netflix it was like <laughs> please the, the marshmallow body on David Harbour <laughs> Enough with that. Where no, David, no. Come I, on, I think, man. you know, hey, whoa. I, I'm so, oh. There's no body shaming no, we'll, yourself. Uh, we'll definitely, Hopper gets to do some very, uh, some very <laughs> thrilling, sexy things in uh, season two. Ooh. So, <laughs> enjoy, kids. <laughs> uh, question for Matthew. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you have played some of my favorite, most difficult, complicated character movies like Birdie and, and yeah, thank you. And so you're, you also play a very complicated, ambiguous character in this series. We talk about how you got into that uh, and your character here. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's up, San Diego? <laughs> I, I, anybody here from San Diego that lives here? Whoa, get him out. Imperial Beach local, right here, hey. IP local. Woo! <laughs> um, Patton, I, yes. don't, I, don't, I, I don't have any way of answering that question other than to, uh, I mean, the, the, the wonderful Duffer Brothers and Sean Levy, they created uh, an amazing script that, that provided each of us with, with characters. That's where it all begins, you know. Yeah. And you, 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 you take those words and you try to create a character and bring that person to life. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great pleasure. You know, I, yeah. wow. I, I, I can't be any more complicated than that. I went to acting school and they taught me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nice. Now, Natalia and Joe. Uh, and again, I, yes. Oh, wow. Can you tell us... With no spoiler, uh, the, all, the, all the questions, they're all spoiler questions, I'm sorry, but like, what do you think is going to be happening with you guys? What can you tell us about where you guys are heading uh, in season know. two? Yeah. Huh? We know what happened. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, but you can't tell anybody. How, how did you, I mean, were you, how much talking did you do to the Duffer Brothers about, because they're juggling really all these characters, they, everyone on the show does have arcs, so how much input or how much did you talk to these guys about where the characters would be going and... and how they would develop and change? or oh, I feel like almost every time a new script would come out, we would kind of read the script and all talk about it, me, Charlie, and Natalia, yeah. and especially kind of all of our relationships together, and then kind of have a little conference with the boys about, you know, what their thoughts were, what our thoughts were, and then kind of collaborate and come to this agreement. Collaborate, yeah. yeah. But I also loved how they, you two are playing very standard 80s film archetypes. You know, like the... The, the pretty girl and the bad boy jerk boyfriend, but then you're, that's not <laughs> what you are. 
you 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 turn out heroic. You turn like it's it, they add all these dimensions to you, and they if they see you have a lot of fun going, let's let's start them as cliches and then open up all these elements to them. Right, which right. is really interesting. Was that fun to play? Or? No, I mean, yeah, it's I mean a credit to uh, to these boys for for you know giving us characters that are more than what they seem, that are complex, and that feel very real. And that's, that's uh, honestly, it's, it's a gift, and it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it's like, it's like um, on, on, on the paper, it seems very one-sided, where I remember like reading the first episode. You read the character, and it could just be some jerk. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you want to bring a real person, you know, to, to this thing that is such a great group of people. So, um, yeah, I think it's just about trying to like find the human moments in the script and kind of well, you guys nailed bring them it. Out. It was yeah. it was really amazing. And and I understand that there are some additional cast members you would like to introduce us to now. That I'm like yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know how I got to be in charge of this, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, Announce the their first, name was wrong. The first person I am going to introduce is uh, a new character named Billy and it's played by Dacre Montgomery. Everybody And next we have Max, AKA Mad Max, played by the wonderful Sadie Sink. And we have the newest addition to Hawkins Lab, Dr. Owens, played by Paul Reiser. Daker! Montgomery, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your character this new season. Uh, yeah, um, well, just to start, that was amazing. And, oh my uh, God. I was a huge <laughs> fan of the first season, so this is amazing to kind of see this up there and be part of it. Um, yeah, I think a little bit about my character is the Duffers were very vocal with me about playing around with, as you see here, monsters, like as an antagonist, and they kind of wanted to play around with me as a human antagonist. So dropping a little bit of spice into a recipe that you all know and love is an honor, and I, I hope that I can be scary enough. Well, I won't, I won't give away too much else, but um, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Wow. Um, and now, uh, Paul Reiser. We, uh, <coughs> Paul Reiser, ladies and gentlemen, I have a question. Uh, I worked at Zany's in Chicago a week after you, back in 1989. I... <laughs> In the condo, I left a cassette tape. It was Smithereens, and did you? No, someone I got said it. you took I have it. it. I have it. No, I, I thought you'd ask for it, but I got it. Okay, I, I need yeah, yeah. that back. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you had. Um, I'm going to assume. I'm curious if this if that show will be any good if you see it from a distance, because for like looking up like that, it's unbelievable. Oh, I know it was very close and very low. It's fantastic. You know what? This next season, the Dubbers have asked if you would lay on the floor under your TV and watch it that way. That was, I, when they show it again, I'm going to try to run yeah, down there. That was, Can we all do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. Now, does it look good from down there? It look good? All right. Now, am I assuming rightly that you're a villain or not? Or what, who are you? Yes, you're assuming. I am assuming. <laughs> yes, you're assuming. Uh, I, uh, I won't say. I, I think it's, uh, understandably, they're uh, a little nervous about the guy who's coming in to replace this freaking guy who was no good. I always said it. <laughs> I said it, by the way, in earlier films. I said, that guy's no good. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, So I basically come in to, from the government to clean up uh, Brenner's mess. And, uh, it's not a mess. We'll, we'll see. Well, not a mess, but uh, it was untidy. It was certainly untidy. <laughs> and... Uh, Certain things happen. Okay. Why do you assume that I'm not uh, like the, the actor? You, your guy. scenes, look, your scenes are sinister. Yes. That's a, you got wires on a kid's head. It was head. so tough <laughs> that they couldn't even put it in the trailer. That's how brutal and, and, and uh, lively my stuff okay. is. Okay. They thought it would be too much for these people. You're, you're, you're a funny actor, but you're also good at playing sinister. I was not sad when you got eaten in Aliens. I'm sorry. You were a sinister guy. <laughs> wow. Okay. Maybe that was a little. You're not you getting that cassette back now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sadie, you are joining 
uh, the kids. You are playing a character named um, uh, Mad Max. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you uh, interact with them? What did you like best about doing the... Had you, had you watched the first season? Yes, I watched the first season. All my friends loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not you. No, I, I didn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I just kidding. I loved it. I loved it. So that's what made getting the audition really exciting for me, just knowing the show. And I knew um, Caleb and Gaten before. Oh, you did? But yeah, we were all on Broadway together. You were on Broadway together? That's, oh my God! Oh my God! I love it's this! It's so cute! It's cute! <laughs> all right, Wolf Hard, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> mm. Wolf Hard! Meet me in the parking lot. Oh, three. I will. I, <laughs> Whoa! I, not, not the face, though. This is where uh, I make my money. Um, again, without spoilers, like how do you, how do you join the group? Or should, should we just wait to find this out? I feel weird asking this, but hmm. Hmm. how do I join the group? Oh, so I mean, she moves from California, so that's how she fits into season two. Oh, okay. Let's leave it at that. I don't want right, to yeah, spoil anything. Right, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. But. Yeah. Now, um, we, I wanted to uh, uh, see if we have any questions from the audience. I wanted to uh, open up uh, the panel now. Spotlight. To Look at the spotlight. That's awesome. Hey. Oh, oh, you got it. Got it. Shannon Purser, Barb from season one. Barb, come up here. Come up here, Shannon. Come up here. Oh my God. <laughs> Shannon, what was your question? What was your question? Uh, I think it was if she was going to be in season two. She's not. <laughs> Where is she? Oh, she has to go down. Yeah. Yes, she may. I was wondering if Barb is going to be in season two. Oh. <laughs> She's dead. Yeah, I can answer that. No. <laughs> wow. Harsh. Harsh. Oh, but there will be justice for Barb. Yep. <laughs> justice, justice for Barb. Wow. Barb will be avenged. 